Welcome to our poster describing an exciting innovation that took place in a first year course that I taught for three years. The in-home family visits in this course had many challenges and I was inspired to try simulation by Marion and her colleagues. I met Laura at a conference where I was presenting with a colleague about the CanSim virtual simulation game or VSG design process. CanSim or the Canadian Alliance of Nurse Educators Using Simulation is a network of nurse educators that share resources and expertise related to clinical simulation education and research. We film our own videos using a GoPro camera from the perspective of a nurse interacting with a patient, virtually putting the learner into the shoes of the nurse. In our VSGs, learners select from one of three options at each decision point and are provided with immediate feedback for both incorrect and correct responses. Three choices are optimal to prevent cognitive overload and make it easier to provide plausible alternative responses. Laura was able to adapt this process for her own course. For entry-level students, web-based simulation informed by game design principles was deemed an appropriate replacement for clinical hours. In partnership with the Cambrian College Teaching and Learning Innovation Hub, we created three parts to the simulation that aligned with how students traditionally engaged in the three in-home family visits in this course. We used branching logic for the first assessment of chronicity, which is basically like a choose your own adventure story. I wanted to test their critical thinking and assessment skills by presenting them with a client that had three chronic conditions and having them identify which one was the major concern for the client at this time the students could progress down a path of complete assessment for each condition. There were cues that the client was not concerned about that condition at this time in the two incorrect paths, and the student had the option to redirect the assessment to focus on the client's main concern at that time. The second simulation was more linear in nature, meaning that if a student selected a less than optimal option, they were provided with feedback and redirected to ask a different question from the previous list. The simulation was more linear in nature due in part to the length of the simulation and the structure of the assessment framework. Third, an in-class role play and debrief was held. Students were able to ask questions of the family using a Google form before class. Some questions were answered through an app as shown on the phone under the implementation section of the poster and all questions were answered during class by the actors. We chose to use H5P technology because it was free, open source and integrated into our learning management system. I like the visual interface that you can see on the bottom left of the poster and recommend it to anyone developing simulations in H5P. The course schedule related to the simulations is displayed on the bottom middle of the poster. After the virtual simulations, students completed an open book quiz. Links to the quizzes were placed right under the associated simulation as shown under the top of the implementation section of this poster. Because the students were in their first year, it helped to dedicate in-class computer time to guide them through the process. In the same course, students earn points for completing activities that they could cash in for their choice of awards. Near the end of the course, some students chose to work with me to create a simulation scenario for future use in the course. Our videographer filmed it and students acted in the video. The scenarios they developed were highly relevant and met the needs of future learners in the course. The overall course experience improved. Students could start their simulations right away, had more in-class discussions and support because I knew the families, could replay the simulations if they wanted to, and seem less stressed than previous cohorts. Of course, it also saved the institution money because they did not need to hire people to supervise in-home family visits and the simulations could be reused. Reflecting on this project, we were able to demonstrate that virtual simulation development by faculty is feasible, that gamification impacts student motivation and engagement, and that co-creation with students is valuable to their learning. However, formal research is needed to measure effectiveness and impact on learning. Several challenges were encountered that could be enhanced in future iterations. Firstly, internal access limited impact. We could create open access simulations with the potential for international impact. Secondly, lack of variety. We recognize a need to recruit more diverse actors to reflect patient and student populations. And thirdly, the length of the scenario. We could divide the longer simulation into two and work with experts to focus the content. Additionally, our future directions will include research about co-created simulation development. Thank you very much for visiting our poster. Our references and article on this project are available at the bottom right of the poster by clicking on the links or by scanning the QR code. Please reach out if you have any questions.